maybe the planning is watching some YouTube videos of other combat systems, or maybe the planning is, yeah. you know, literally go play some game that you like and then write down what you like about it. Like the planning could literally be just find out what it is just so that you know when you sit down at your computer to work, you're there to work. You're not there to just sort of play around once you plan for that to be the case, you know? You know, the, actually, that's an interesting thing you just mentioned because it's something that it kind of dawned on me um, a couple months ago. And and maybe it's obvious to everyone but me, but, you know, I was learning Blender and um, I had picked up Blender, you know, a, a while ago and I was just kind of getting back into it. And, I, and I've done other artistic things, you know, like designing my thumbnails, for instance, and, you know, designing things, whatever, in Photoshop. And one thing that kind of opened my eyes was, you know, in the Blender tutorial, um, one of the steps was grab a picture of the thing you're modeling and and you can actually put it into blender in the background and i was like oh that's really cool and i thought like dang that applies to so many other things like it, it applies to game development y you should have a picture of what you're going to create um available to look at so an obvious example would be and i, I actually use this because I, I suck at level design and i was like I, I it's one thing i really wish i was good at um and so i was like dang i should apply this so then what i one thing that I did to exercise this was I downloaded a, a 3D model pack of like an outdoor environment. And I literally just took the pictures that are on the asset page. And I was like, I'm going to recreate that exactly. Um, and in doing that, I was like, oh, wow, you know, I, I learned some things about placing assets and and how to build an environment that I just never um, thought of before, because whenever I would create an environment, I would just have the assets and I'd be like, okay, uh, I'll put a tree here and a tree here and a bush there. And then I'd just be like, this looks like crap. What am I doing? I don't even know what I'm doing. But the same thing applies for, for designing systems. You know, like let's say you're designing a dialogue system. I think it's important to go and look at other dialogue systems, see how they work, maybe make like a little GIF or something so you can, so you can see it in action. And I think that would help, um, you know, help you plan, help you make decision, uh, decisions about your code. Um, I, I just think that's a valuable thing. And if you saw Bracky's latest video on um, uh, turn-based combat, he one of his, spon his sponsor for the video was like this Kanban board type application. And he actually does that. He, he takes little gifts of like Pokemon, I think because he was making a turn-based game and, and put it in there. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's actually what you should be doing, even if you are yep. a coder. I mean, I use Binnenote for my last game jam. It's fantastic just to be able to, to grab snippets of code for things and reference it and that kind of thing. Yeah. Although you did bring up a very good point, which is um, when it comes to getting reference material, like like you said with the Blender thing, uh, a fantastic example of this is if you're making uh, levels. Mm -hmm. So one of the best things you can do if you're trying to design out your levels for your game, get out a piece of paper, draw rectangles, get a sense of what the this is the character and you know, this is a corridor and I'll put stuff here and I'll have this thing and basically draw out the shape of the room and how, you know, various loot items and pickups will be, then take a picture of it. And then you take that picture, put it on a plane in Unity, scale it up, stick it on the ground, and then place boxes where the boxes were. Pro Builder is great for this. Um, and you, you get a really quick rapid prototyping session of what your game will actually play like. If you sit there at a blank slate, I can't do it. I personally, yeah. if I'm, if I'm open, looking at empty Unity, it's like an infinite sea of possibilities, and every single tree looks like it's, you know, <laughs> is that too conspicuous? I put oh, a tree yeah, down. Totally. People know it's a tree, just put there. That's nonsense. So if you instead jot down some rectangles, get some senses of where things will go, you can use that as your literal foundation for what your application is. So the whole, the whole idea of getting some reference material and then putting it into the environment you're working in is fantastic. Like it really makes your life easier to physically see a, a representation of what your um, design and layout is like. And I think every, I think professionals do it. I think professionals, whether they're artists or game developers, what have you, I think they would say, yeah, I, you have to do that because working from a blank slate, it's, it's, it's like being productive versus being effective. It's not very, it, you might feel very productive if you create an entire level and you said, look, I did this from scratch with no other reference. It's like, okay, how long did it take you? You know, if you really want to be effective, you need to find ways to be effective. And one way is to definitely not start with a blank slate for sure. You know, and I, I you know, thinking back to some, you know, I like to watch, you know, artists uh, like speed drawings and sp any like sort of speed modeling, things like that. And come to think of it, they uh, generally speaking, I would say 90 percent of the time, there's always a reference. 
And actually, I saw an interview with one uh, 3D modeler, and he said that whenever he's modeling something um, in Blender, on one monitor, he'll have Blender. On the other monitor, he'll set up um, like a, a rotating wallpaper that, or I forget what he uses, but basically it's like he just a bunch of images that rotate, you know, every couple of seconds, and it's of the thing that he's modeling. So if it's like an anvil, which shout out to Blender Guru, because that's what I, that's what's in my head right now. Uh, he has a, a an anvil course. And it's like that, you know, you could have like a bunch of anvils constantly uh, moving on your screen and you'll see, and you know, you'll have that in your head and it's a good reference. And the same thing applies to game development.